The rollout of COVID-19 vaccines to the public is imminent. This is our chance to return to normal in the fastest and safest way possible. However, various bad faith or misled personalities online have been spreading both new and old anti-vaccine rhetoric to weaken confidence in the most integral piece of the solution to this pandemic. This video will address the valid concerns, half-truths, and disinfo surrounding the novel SARS-CoV-2 vaccines. While we plan to address the anti-vaccination movement as a whole in future videos, this will specifically focus on the current and soon-to-be distributed mRNA and adenovirus vaccines to prevent COVID-19. Concern number one. This is all happening so fast. How can we trust such a rushed vaccine? Typical vaccine trials go through several phases of testing varying numbers of people. Phase 1 typically starts with a small group of less than 100 people to assure that there are no serious solicited side effects to assure that an immune response is observed. Phase 2 trials widen the sample size by age, race, and various conditions to further assure safety and immune response among these groups. Phase 3 is the last phase before application for approval. To test efficacy, thousands of people are placed in either a placebo group or a group that receives the vaccine. Afterward, they are monitored to see who contracts the disease that the vaccine prevents against. Once a certain number of people in the clinical trial catch the said disease, the vaccine group is compared to the non-vaccine group to test efficacy. This can take a long time for many vaccines that protect against diseases that are not extremely common. The one silver lining to a pandemic is that this trial can proceed extremely fast due to the rates of infection among the general population. Because of so many study participants contracting COVID-19 so fast, the COVID-19 vaccine research has progressed at breakneck speed, without cutting any corners. Additionally, the new mRNA vaccine technology had previous studies that had not been granted approval for public use yet simply due to lack of immediate need for them. Between building off previous research, a ripe environment for Phase 3 trials, and performing steps that can be done in parallel to each other, we have achieved vaccines that have demonstrated over 90% efficacy, which is very good. Concern number two, is there a risk of developing full-blown COVID-19 from the vaccine? Absolutely not. Traditional vaccines usually do use a weakened or dead virus to give the body a chance to develop immunity to it by recognizing its key traits with little risk. This can go wrong, such as the original polio vaccine not being weakened enough resulting in thousands developing full paralytic polio in the 50s. However, new mRNA vaccines give temporary instructions to your body to produce the identifiers of COVID-19. This causes the immune system to store information about SARS-CoV-2 in case the actual virus enters the body in the future. If someone has never seen a bear before, would they rather have a sick bear locked in their house with them and have to fight it off with their bare hands? or instead be given a bear hunting manual in case they run into a bear in the future. I'd take the latter. These vaccines eliminate any risk of exposure to COVID-19, making them potentially the safest type of vaccine to date. Concern number three, what are the actual risks of the vaccine? The most common reactions to the vaccine are soreness of the arm, mild chills and fever. These effects are not observed in everyone, but they are manageable by means of anti-inflammatories and hydration. Fortunately, the Pfizer vaccine trial observed less intense side effects in people 60 and older. One overhyped concern online is Bell's palsy, a facial paralysis that is said to be the result of the vaccine. Several cases of Bell's palsy occurred in the vaccine trials, but these were found not to be associated with the vaccine, and the rate of contraction was no different than the general population. Additionally, since this vaccine does not include egg proteins like some traditional vaccinations, those with egg allergies are safe to take the shot. However, if you have a history of severe allergies, consult an allergist prior to vaccination. If you have cosmetic facial fillers, you may experience temporary swelling around the location of the fillers. Concern number four, what about the risk of the mRNA messing with your DNA? mRNA and DNA are not the same. mRNA vaccines send a tiny segment of instructions to human cells to temporarily produce the spike protein of SARS-CoV-2, which is the key signifier of the virus. These spike proteins are created, sent out of the cells, and are identified by the immune system. Antibodies are then created by the immune system for the next time actual coronavirus enters the body. The mRNA then degrades once the job is done. These mRNA segments are extremely fragile and they do not last long in the body. Hence why the vaccines need to be kept at such a low temperature. 
Lastly, this mRNA enters the cytoplasm of the cells, not the nucleus, so there is no chance of it being incorporated into your DNA. Concern number five. What about these genetically modified virus vaccines? AstraZeneca's AZD1222 vaccine, formerly known as the Chimpanzee Adenovirus Oxford, or CHADOX, used a genetically modified flu virus for chimpanzees. It's modified to look like COVID-19 and then attacked by the immune system to produce antibodies. Think of it like painting a horse to look like a zebra. It's still just a horse. The chimpanzee adenovirus is completely harmless to humans who do not have the proper bodily environment for the virus to reproduce. It simply floats around until the immune system kills it, and then immunity to COVID-19 is achieved. Workers at dog shelters don't worry about getting infected by parvo when there's an outbreak among the dogs because their virus isn't compatible with humans. This is very similar with the chimp adenovirus. Concern number six. What about the long-term side effects? Vaccines typically solicit side effects within the first few days of injection. One particular exception was the 1976 swine flu vaccine. This vaccine increased some people's likelihood of contracting Guillain-Barre syndrome to 1 to 2 in 100,000, which isn't a significant risk. That being said, vaccines generally do not provide side effects that show up in the long run. And these new COVID-19 vaccines are no different. Nothing in the vaccine trials or the first round of injections for the public has suggested such an issue. Concern number seven. Can't I just ride this out until a bunch of people get the vaccine first? Everyone that is fit and recommended to receive the vaccine should be vaccinated as soon as possible. This will better ensure herd immunity for the rare few that cannot receive the vaccine safely. Herd immunity occurs when a group has enough individuals immune to a disease in their population to protect those that can still get infected. It's like removing platforms in a video game. The player has a harder time traversing the level from platform to platform if there are less to land on. If not enough people receive the vaccine to reach herd immunity, the pandemic will drag on. This is similar to a concept in economics called the free rider problem. If one person doesn't pay their taxes for roads, it won't really affect road construction and that person can still use them. However, if most people don't pay taxes for roads, everyone suffers from lack of roads. We need an estimate of 60 to 70% of people vaccinated and immune to COVID-19 in order to reach herd immunity, but we also want to stay well above that level because we can fall back underneath the threshold and lose it. So getting as many people as possible vaccinated as soon as possible is integral to ending this global crisis. One of the best ways you can directly help is to get yourself and those around you vaccinated. For more academically sourced questions, answers, and information about the COVID-19 vaccine, visit covidvaxinfo.com. Many thanks to Claire Testoni of the Bow and Dagger Theater Company and the Singing Bones Podcast, Jake Rokotansky of the QAnon Anonymous Podcast, and Timba on Toast for providing their voices for this video. All of their links can be found in the description. Please like and subscribe for more videos like this one, and stay safe out there.